Hello there, my fellow Inner Sphere engineers, and welcome back to some Battletech lore. Today we shall continue with our already venerable Battle Armor series, with a video I wouldn't actually have expected to end up making back when I started the series. And that is part 3 on the Free Worlds League Battle Armor. Surprisingly, it turns out that this faction has among the greatest number of unique Battle Armor designs in the entire Inner Sphere. If you're not a fan of House Marek though, rest assured, this is the final video on them. There are two designs I'd like to narrate to you about today, the Leonidas and the Zephos. I couldn't find more than a couple of decent pictures on them, so my apologies for that. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The first and lighter of today's designs is the Leonidas, massing at one ton. The Leonidas battle armor was developed at the turn of the century to fill a gap in Oriente's military capabilities caused by a scarcity of the Achilles stealth suit. It would be more than adequate to replace the older suit and was soon exported widely across the inner sphere and even the nearby nations in the periphery. The successes achieved by soldiers armed with the Leonidas are a testimony to its great value, as well as a warning about neglecting proper reconnaissance and screening elements. The Leonidas is ideal for battlefield missions such as infiltration, ambush, artillery spotting, and counterinsurgency patrol. The modular weapon mounts allow the battlesuit to readily switch between support, scouting, and attack roles for maximum tactical flexibility. The Leonidas is deployed extensively by the forces of the FWLM. Decades of exports to the mercenary market, the Capellans, the Canopians, and even the Marian hegemony would provide a strong production base for the design. Once the League was reformed, production was largely, but not entirely, rerouted to equipping Oriente's fellow provinces. Given the suit's capabilities, they are frequently reserved for the more experienced and better trained infantry soldiers. One particularly successful use of the suit was in early December 3142 at the Fourth Battle of Tamarind. One week prior to a final FWLM assault, Duke Fontaine Merrick established a volunteer platoon to infiltrate his former capital, Zanzibar. Calling themselves the Hombres Locos, after a Gibraltar street gang, the platoon snuck through the mech patrols around the suburbs of Zanzibar and stole into the city interior under the cover of rubble. Native urban guerrillas provided the hombres with help evading infantry patrols and locating a key command post of the 11th Lyran Guards. Each hour for the assault on Zanzibar came just before dawn, and the hombres assaulted the command post only minutes before. A number of the suits had been smuggled into a nearby building from the sewers below and blew out of the storefront as a complete surprise to the defenders. Lyran infantry was no match for the battle suits, and in the space of a few minutes, the Hombres annihilated an infantry regiment's command staff. For several additional hours, the Hombres operated in Zanzibar, with tag-equipped suits designating targets for homing rounds fired by the Tamarind artillery. Sporadic clashes with conventional Lyran forces happened throughout but it was only during their exfiltration that the Hombres were confronted by Lyran battle mechs. A lance of guard mechs, responding to an advance by the first Tamarind regulars, stumbled over the platoon as they were making their way out of a northern suburb. The commander of the Hombres and her first squad had enough warning to set up an ambush, swarming and damaging a couple of the mechs and buying time for the remainder of the unit to escape. A less successful example of the Leonidas in action dates from 3133, during an attempted Capellan infiltration on Stike a few months after the blackout. The Capellan dropship was tracked and the planetary militia mobilized just in time to intercept the force in the wilderness outside the capital of Lorelei. Unsurprisingly, the Leonidas fared poorly when the freedom to choose when and where the battle took place was denied. By aggressively maintaining contact, the Republic militia destroyed the entire infiltration force, including the platoon of Leonidas suits. Protected by standard stealth armor and capable of moving at speeds of up to 32.4 km an hour, although incapable of jumping, 
The Leonidas carries an anti-personnel weapon mount and a modular weapon mount on the right arm, while a heavy battle claw was fitted to the left arm. The modular weapon mount can be fitted with various weapons and systems, including a David Light Gauss rifle with 15 rounds of ammo, a machine gun, a fire drake support needler with 30 rounds of ammo, a light tag system with 60 rounds of ammo, and a package of improved sensors. Mounted to the body of the suit was an Angel ECM suite. The second and much heavier design of today is the Zephos, massing at 2 tons. The Zephos, named after an ancient type of Greek double-edged sword, was developed by the Marek Stewart Commonwealth to grant their infantry troops advanced protection against devastating artillery strikes. The main advantage of the Zephos is its armor, mitigating one of the greatest weaknesses of battle armor in general, and that is vulnerability to artillery fire. With configurations ranging from raw firepower to heat sensors, the Zephos rarely, if ever, needs any outside assistance. The high-powered communication system also allows commanders to keep communication with their troops running, even when electronic countermeasures are deployed against them. It was during a raid against Laureles in 3118 that pirates jammed communication in and around the city of Rourke. Unable to communicate properly, the planetary militia had some contingency plans put together for an uncoordinated defense. Having recently received a shipment of eight Zephos, or Zephi, maybe, they were surprised when their new battlesuits were able to communicate even inside the ECM field. The militia quickly split their Zephos troops into pairs to accompany the search parties. Not expecting a coordinated defense, the pirates would be slaughtered. In 3125, elements of the eight Free Worlds Legionnaires traveled through the Oriente Protectorate to assault the Capellan Confederation or Cori, while painted in the colors of the Oriente Protectorate. Details about this attack have only recently become public knowledge, when the files were accidentally released during the Marek Stewart Commonwealth's dissolution. The Legionnaires attacked Hollis Incorporated facilities, employing rapid airdrops. While mechs dropped around the facilities, battle armor, led by a platoon of Zephos troops, had dropped directly inside. They quickly dispatched the defenders and took tons of catapult spare parts with them, until they disengaged and fled the system. The Zephos was extensively used during the invasion of the former Free Worlds League. The Marek Stewart Commonwealth used them many times during the early months of the invasion. Using the slow communication between the different combat groups of the Wolves and the Lyrans to their advantage, the defenders employed the same strategy over a long period of time on multiple worlds. On Autumn Wind and elsewhere, the defending troops used cavalry helicopters to transport the Zephos troops a few hundred meters behind enemy lines, and then attacked their artillery support. With almost no time to react, the Wolves bombarded the advancing battle armors with missiles and direct fire artillery. But by the time they realized that the Xyphosis did not take the expected devastating damage, it was already too late. On Washburn, the Marek Stewart Commonwealth once again tried to use this tactic, but with even less success. The invaders were prepared, and had dozens of battle armor troops in hiding behind their artillery positions, waiting for the eventual onslaught. The defenders' sudden appearance and lasers and inferno missiles nullified the advantage of the Zephos. The Commonwealth troops were slaughtered to the last man. The few Xyphoses that were not sent to the front line fell back to the Iranian Technologies facilities, where they reinforced the defenses and made their last stand. More recently, the Wolf Empire has attacked the Republic Remnant on Al Hena. In what seemed like a training exercise for the newly minted warriors, they copied the tactics used by the Commonwealth during that invasion. Only the lack of experience among the wolf warriors prevented a major disaster for the remnant there. All the Zepho suits mount close to a ton of reactive armor, and mount a basic manipulator on the right arm and a modular weapon mount on each arm, although the mount of the left has the greater capacity. Configuration A of the Zephos mounts a light recoilless rifle and 20 rounds of ammo on the right arm, and a magshot gauss rifle with 10 rounds of ammo to the left arm. Configuration B mounts a one-shot SRM-1 in the right arm and a plasma rifle with 20 rounds of ammo in the left arm. 
Finally, configuration C mounts a heat sensor in the right arm and a heavy flamer in the left arm. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the last couple of designs from the FWL in Battledeck for today. If you're a Free World League fan, I do hope you enjoyed your faction getting more episodes than any other on Battle Armor. If you don't like them, as I said in the beginning, you can still be happy, because this is the final video on them. All that being said, are the Zephos or the Leonidas among your favorite Battle Armors? Did you ever use them or see them in your games? As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts or experiences you had with them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the episode, please consider leaving a like, share and subscribe for future content. If you'd like to support the channel directly, there's a Patreon link in the video description. Thanks a lot for watching and have an awesome and healthy day.